Hi, everyone. I'm Tanya, your host for the Denda Vedanda podcast. Thank you for your support for this past year. 2020 has been an incredible journey. I know it hasn't been easy for any of us, so I hope that it will be much better for all of us in 2021. So I just want to thank you for all your support and wish you all the best for the coming year. And I'd like to present to you the best of Denda Vedanda podcast this year. I hope that you found what I've shared with my guests as useful and meaningful. If you have any suggestions for what you'd like to see more of, please let me know. There are some of the post-divorce etiquette that's like not social media between you and your ex that you're now able to talk about that you, know, you wish that was you skipped certain chapters, you know, that was a waste of time. What what were some of the post divorce etiquette things there that you wish happened sooner, I guess? Um I think making sure that each other were mentally stable, um, financially stable, and I'll say economically stable because it comes down to let's both make sure the kids are taken care of so that we both can be at work and be present within our day so that we're getting our job done and feeling like we're at least able to accomplish our lives outside of what's going on at home, you know? Um, yeah. When things were raw, that was a huge problem. I felt like everything was on my shoulders. Mm -hmm. And simply, I'm the one that wanted the divorce. So it was kind of his way of saying, oh, you think you can do everything on your own. Here you go. It affected, it affected a lot of things in my life at that time. I could hold on to that anger. Um, mm. But it doesn't serve anybody by doing that. Um, so, you know, I feel like just etiquette all around of just check yourself. There's a lot more people involved than just the two of you. So you got to find a way to to be whole all around, I feel. See, this is why I love this girl. This is why I love this girl. <laughs> she's not a Zen master. She's not a guru, but like she's so <laughs> dead on common sense. Like, let go. I'm too fabulous. Uh, and now you're divorced. Right. <laughs> divorced and enjoying your... <laughs> so fabulous <laughs> but also I mean really it will it will just bring you down and you don't want your kids to see that side of it really dating after divorce yeah so a lot of fear that comes into um, finding the self-esteem mm -hmm. to going back out mm -hmm. um, into a dating world the mental readiness mm -hmm. of someone okay. who, who's still trying to get brave enough to date again okay uh, not necessarily using okay. a, a dating app that's yes. one way to to do that but even just to prepare mentally of being out there again mm. and, um, okay that's interesting so first of all you need to understand what you learn from your past relationship Okay. If it's possible, you even have to have like a journal or something. From my, uh, first of all, you have to start from your divorce, if you are divorced, okay? So what works, what didn't work at a time, yeah? Uh, so what if I do differently? This is, I'm talking about the normal, like, uh, you know, break up. Like, if you're not break up with the narcissistic personality disorder, with the abusive and stuff like that, because right. if you've been through something like that, you really need to get help. I've been through an abusive relationship too in the past, you know, yeah, like it, uh, it's like the shortest relationship I ever had, but there were like the most drama ever, you know, even me. So I need to, I need to accept, yeah, I, I think all of your ladies need to learn from my mistake too, that you are powerless over love. Okay. So me. I'm kind of snob. I think I was like, hi, I'm a psychologist and I'm an expert, so I'm going to be just fine, <laughs> you know? I if you send an, if this guy have an ADD, I think, you know, I can take care of him. If this guy have like a certain kind of personality, like it's not just a quirk, it's actually a red flag. Make me miss all the red flags that I actually have to be put into concern. So please mm -hmm. don't be like me, you know, when I become a, I think that I can overpower love, which is I should know better, you know, that's my biggest mistake in relationship. I even already become a sexologist when I uh, uh, do that mistake. But 
then I have to learn it the hard way. That was like the shortest relationship I ever had, but it was like the most uh, painful because I make a lot of bad choices during that because I think I can handle that. So first of all, when you think that you can handle that and you think you are powerful over love, then you are in denial. Mm. You know, wow. so do not enter a relationship and think like, hey, I can help this guy, you know, hey, this guy will meet me, you know, or, you know, if without him, I was just not going to be the best person or the, the best fashion of myself. If you entering a relationship with that kind of thought, with that kind of blueprint, it's going to screw you up like shortly. So, yeah. uh, when, so before you are really ready into a dating, ask yourself, am I enough? That I feel fulfilled with my life. Am I okay untuk like going out sendiri, makan di restoran sendiri, and just enjoying yourself without your woman's friends or anybody else? Are you really content by just like doing nothing with uh, with yourself, just watching TV or reading your good books, you know? Doing all the activity without other people. If you are comfortable with that, I'm not saying if you're extrovert or introvert. I know it's kind of hard for your extrovert, maybe. I hear you. I'm I'm extrovert all the way. But when I feel content and peace with it, then that's the only time I know that I'm ready for relationship. Finished. Um, I'm not regretting of anything because that marriage has to happen for me. Di hidup aku. Karena this one year, I... I dig deep into myself, like even deeper and deeper. Bahkan dari sebelumnya gitu. Even though I've done this, uh, apa namanya, retreat inilah, retreat itu apa segala macam. But last year was another eye opening gitu. Untuk tahu bahwa uh, a person have a person itu saya, saya sebagai individu itu masih mempunyai ego yang harus diperbaiki gitu. Um, apapun problem itu kita sebagai manusia itu bisa contribute di problem tersebut terus there's a lot of silver lining dan benang merah yang aku dapatkan se- setelah aku menikah gitu gue merasa gue mendapatkan banyak saudara gitu karena uh, karena gue selalu menjaga hubungan baik dengan semuanya gue nggak tahu abis mendengar podcast ini Mereka akan sakit hati atau enggak. Well, it's not my problem. I'm just telling the truth. Um, tapi, uh, gue merasa bahwa apapun yang terjadi buruk atau baik di dalam hidup, apalagi pernikahan itu, itu tuh ada 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 tujuannya gitu. Yang gue nggak tahu tujuannya akan apa. Tapi kalau buat aku hmm. sekarang itu ada beberapa titik yang gue temukan. Kalau gue nggak menikah, gue nggak nggak kalau gue nggak bercerai dan gue nggak ketemu dengan my ex, gue tidak akan mempelajari beberapa hal-hal baru tentang gratitude dan appreciation. Hmm. Karena pas lagi aku stres, aku juga belajar beberapa uh, apa namanya reflection. Terus aku ketemu banyak orang yang bisa bantu untuk kita reflect ke diri kita. Yang aku pelajari itu adalah um, acceptance, appreciation, uh, gratitude, like unconditional love, terus um, you know, beings be happy, itu kan base dari semuanya, sama letting go. It's the six fundamental things that uh, semenjak bulan Juni tahun lalu itu aku sangat aman, tanamkan. Karena di semua hal buruk itu pasti ada, bukan hikmah ya, ada jalannya untuk kita sekarang tuh kayak gimana gitu. Jadi I'm not, I'm not regretting anything. And then it teaches me unconditional love. Um, it teaches me on um, being kayak, okay, what you had before with him, you want something transactional. What I want is something else. Jadi kayak mm-hmm. big picture tuh banyak banget sih kak. And I believe, because you are a gender too, I believe you know mm-hmm. how the lessons that you take back home within you after yes. that has already happening. Mm-hmm. Gitu sih. 